Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me freaking Timo Meyer, baby. Also, don't mess with Jake the Snake. He's been good, too, as of late. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils. Buckle up, everyone. Ooh, I rhymed and I didn't even intend to. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils with Trey Matthews. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here at Locked On Network. I'm your host, College Hockey Club, a play announcer. Dell's are for Pucks and Pitch Force. Also, part-time credential media member, Trey Matthews. Before I give you the rundown of today's episode, I first want to be transparent with you guys, my audience. And as you guys realize, the past few weeks, I've been a little more inconsistent when it comes to posting episodes and one of the explanations I gave was that I was on vacation and I just couldn't get to my computer at the time. But I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. As you know, the show has reached new heights in more ways than one. And I can't thank you guys enough for making Locked on Devils your first listen and making it more popular. And it has gone beyond my wildest dreams. And I love doing this show. And as you know, Ever since I've been credentialed, I've been given more opportunities. And since I'm living out West, anytime the Devils make a Western trip, I try to follow them. As you guys know, back in December, I went to Seattle at Climate Pledge Arena to cover the game. Recently, I went to Los Angeles, Anaheim, and also Vegas. And on top of that, I took a trip to Fort Lauderdale. But during that time span, uh, the trade deadline took place. The Devils were sellers at the deadline. They traded away Tyler DeFoley. And they fired Lindy Ruff and Tom Fitzgerald did a press conference. And uh, I was covering the ACHA national tournament in St. Louis not too long ago, because like I say, at the beginning of every episode, I am a college hockey play-by-play announcer. And I enjoy traveling. I enjoy meeting new people. I enjoy going to new locations, but it does take a toll on you both physically and mentally. And I just got to a point where I was just like, I just need a small break. I just need a reset. Otherwise, I'm not going to give you guys my 100% effort. And I never want to half-ass an episode. I never want to give you guys less than my very best because then that's going to shut you guys out and you don't deserve that. And I just want to thank you guys for being patient. I want to thank you guys for always sticking by me, messaging me, saying, hey, where's the episode? Or I want to hear your thoughts on the matter. And that means the world for me. But at the end of the day, I I always say athletes are human. Me as a content creator, I am human as well. And I enjoy doing what I do, but sometimes I just need a break myself just to clear myself both mentally and physically. But I am back and I feel comfortable enough to the point where I think I can give you guys 100% of my very best and let's get right into it. I know I'm a couple days late. I know I'm a couple dollars short, but recently the New Jersey Devils extended their personal winning streak against the Pittsburgh Penguins to seven, meaning they have beaten the Penguins seven times in a row. And that should be no surprise because going into the season, and I mean this with all due respect, I said that the Penguins were probably one of the more overrated teams in the NHL because I said that despite getting Eric Carlson, who is the reigning Norris Trophy winner, they didn't really fix their issues in terms of their age, in terms of their goaltending, And I didn't anticipate for them to be one of the top teams in the Metropolitan Division like everyone was projecting. Yes, you got Malkin, you got Crosby, you got Latang. Those guys have been together for years and years and years, have won a few Stanley Cups together. But they are getting a little up there in age, and now they're in a salary cap crunch. And it's just like, where where do they go from here? They were sellers at the deadline. They got rid of Jake Gensel for Michael Bunting, which I guess perplexed a lot of people, including myself. But Going on from the Penguins to the Devils, I anticipate for the Devils to snap their two-game losing skid against the Penguins, and they did so in very good fashion. And before I give my main talking points of the game, I just first want to say I think the Devils should run back their Stadium Series jerseys for as long as they can. And I'm sure ownership wouldn't mind uh, picking up the tab just a little bit because the Devils are 2-0. and in their stadium series uniforms. And like I told Catherine Bogart when she appeared on this show last month, it's starting to grow on me just a little bit more. 
and it's bring the devil some good fortune because the, the game against the Flyers at MetLife Stadium and their recent game against the Penguins, I'd say that was uh, two of their more impressive victories the last few months because it's been a dark cloud over the Devils organization. And just to be clear, so no one takes this out of context, I say those two games are one of their best. I didn't say it's their very best, just to be perfectly clear. And um, we all know how superstitious hockey players can be. But let me tell you my thoughts on the game in segment one. Then in segment two, I will list my three stars and also give it a few honorable mentions. And I, I have to give credit to Timo Meyer because Timo Meyer has been on an absolute tear, but that's for segment two. And then the third and final segment, like I do with every post-game recap, I will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. Let's start off with my main talking points from the first period. In back-to-back -back outings, I saw the Devils get off to a much better start. And that's been a key talking point because if you guys recall, I was present for the game against the Arizona Coyotes in which post-game, Curtis Lazar and Travis Green they said that it is going to be vital for the Devils to get off to a better start because I don't know what the record is for most first goals let up in a single season, but uh, the Devils are on pace to possibly break that record for what it's worth. But it's it's been the whole talking point this season. We see the memes on social media, one nothing them, and Travis Green says it's a little immature for his team to be doing this. Curse Lazar says that sometimes they leave their – net minders out to dry and they got to do a better job in front of them and in the game against the gold knights it didn't result in a win but you did see the devils get off to a better start against the reigning stanley cup champions and they did technically score the first goal of the game unfortunately it was waved off because timo meyer was uh flagged with goalie interference on logan thompson and that should have been dawson mercer's goal but ironically in this game against the penguins dawson mercer scored the first goal of the game but Another thing that Lazar and Green also hammered home is that, once again, they leave their net minders out to dry, and sometimes they, they're a little too top-heavy in that regards. And it was more or less the same against the Penguins because Jake Allen, he was put to a great test to try to make sure that his team had a legitimate chance of winning. Alex Chabonsi put this out on X. Uh, he shared the heat map of the first period, and he said, Incredibly high event first period between the Devils and Penguins. Jake Allen stopped 1.51 goals above expected. Was excellent again. But New Jersey, they're going to need to tighten up defensively. And I agreed with them, which is the Devils are off to a one to nothing lead. That's great and all. But can they build on that a little bit more? And can they try to take a little bit of the burden off of Jake Allen's shoulders? Because you definitely don't want to uh, put your goalies through that kind of scrutiny because we've already seen what that can result in. And then in the second period, unfortunately, Marcus Pedersen, he tied up the game. And now the question is, how did the Devils answer on back? Because we saw in their one of their more recent games against the Golden Knights, the Devils got off to a one nothing lead thanks to Nico Heischer in the third period, but it was all downhill from there. And the Devils could not make the comeback. They just did not have enough energy. They did not have enough firepower. But luckily, the power play finally woke up in this game Timo Meyer, he netted two power play goals. And Dawson Mercer, he also got another goal. Alexander Holtz, he redeemed himself after making an error early on in the game. And he got his 15th of the season. And we'll talk more about that in the second segment. And Jake Allen, what more can I say? After the second period, the Devils were up 2-1. to one. And then in the third period, thanks to Holtz, Mercer, and Meyer once again, the Devils put the game to bed. Jake Allen said post game that... The goal for the Devils was to kill the will of the Penguins in the third period. Don't give them any sort of hope. This was the Devils game to lose. They were the more dominant team because in the game against the Golden Knights, they were basically playing their luck because the Golden Knights were the more dominant team and the more dominant team came out victorious. But in this case, the Devils, can they try to take away those opportunities from the Penguins because you don't want them to get opportunistic chances and possibly squeak away with the victory and upset you in that regards. And uh, funny that I use the word upset when it comes to winning or losing because it is March Madness time. Hopefully you guys are filling out your book brackets. But anyway, like Jake Allen said, kill their will. And that's exactly what they did in the third period. And Jake Allen was phenomenal in between the pipes once again for Devils. Worth mentioning that this was the first time this season that he started in back-to-back -back games. And I, I got to say, I have been rather impressed with Jake Allen in a devil sweater so far 
and we're definitely going to talk more about him in the second segment. But ultimately, the Devils, did they take all the pressure off of Allen's shoulders? No, the defense still needs to tighten up. But luckily, in back-to-back -back outings, Allen was very strong in between the pipes. Timo Meyer, he continues his dominant play the last month or so because I've been saying that you just got to wait until Timo Meyer is 100%. And then once he gets going, there is no stopping him. Dawson Mercer seems like he's breaking out of his funk just a little bit more. All in all, it was a great victory for the Devils coming on the winning end by a score of 5-2. to two. And I'm not going to uh, get overexcited, but at the same time, I don't want to come off as pessimistic either. Devils still are holding on to a prayer if they want to get to the playoffs. But winning these types of games against the Penguins, a team that you've had great success with recently, I think that was definitely crucial for the Devils. But like I said, not going to jump the gun on anything, not going to get overexcited, but it was a good game for Devils, and I cannot deny that. Now, I'm going to list some honorable mentions in my three stars of the game momentarily, but before we continue, let me tell you guys about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Okay, before I list my three stars of the matchup versus the Penguins, some honorable mentions. Jesper Bratt. He walked away with a couple points in this game, but two assists. I think it's worth mentioning that Jesper Bratt, he was a man on a mission to try to get a goal. Like, it, the puck just rang out of the post multiple times, crossbar, whatever. Jesper Bratt was bound to score in this game. Unfortunately, he just got snake bitten, but at least he walked away with something. He was definitely playing with some aggressive nature. And it goes back to the episode I did prior in which I said, I don't think there's much concern to be made for the Devils' big three in Bratt, Heischer, and Hughes is because I still think Heischer is still uh, doing what he can do with the team. Great two-way player. Bratt's been one of the more consistent pieces throughout the course of the season for Devils. He's also been one of their more healthy players. And then for Jack Hughes, yes, he's, I guess you could say like he kind of takes the safe route nowadays, but can you really blame him? He's been, he's missed significant time due to two injuries. And I think it's better to be safe than sorry. Does he need surgery? I don't know what he needs surgery on. I haven't really heard anything if I'm being completely honest, but if he is hurting, then I, if the devils are out of a playoff hunt, then there's no shame in just shutting him down. So that way he doesn't uh, injure himself even more, but that's pure speculation on my end. Back to Jesper Bratt, great outing in this game, walked away with a couple points. Alexander Holtz. Something I've been talking about for Alexander Holtz is that I feel as though he's a scapegoat. Recently, Tom Fitzgerald said that Alexander Holtz wasn't having a good year. I'm not going to act like I know more than Tom Fitzgerald because I don't, but I'm going to have to respectfully disagree with them in this case. I think Alexander Holtz is made out to be a scapegoat for this Devils team. Is he perfect? No, but he has a lot of upside. He has a lot of scoring potential, and it's something I've been talking about in all of my trade speculation episodes, which is if Alexander Holtz is traded, you best believe that there's going to be a team that's willing to let him make mistakes in order for him to grow. And I was actually on Let's Go Devils podcast with Nick Villano and Sam Wu recently, and I talked about the circumstance, which is if Alexander Holtz turns the puck over under Lindy Ruff, he's benched the rest of the game. Whereas if Luke Hughes makes a mistake, if Jack Hughes makes a mistake, obviously there's not much consequence for them. And they're the Hughes brothers. You, they're they're sort of like the main pieces. They're the, they're what people want to see. But anyway, digressing a little bit, I say that Alexander Holtz, his leash needs to be extended just a little bit more. Interim head coach Travis Green was quoted to say uh, earlier today, as I'm recording this episode, years ago I probably would have pulled the trigger in that scenario. But I do think that Holtz has been for me giving a real honest effort and a harder effort to doing things that maybe he's not great at or comfortable with. It's not that it goes unnoticed. As a coach, there's different ways of teaching, different ways of coaching. 
Holtzy and I have had a conversation on the bench about the play that was very direct, but also giving a player a chance to go back out and play is important as well. That might change in different nights and different scenarios, but I felt last night that Holtzy was going and putting him back was the right thing to do. You don't always get it right either. This is something that I've been hammering home when Lindy Ruff was a head coach, which is, yes, Alexander Holtz is not perfect, but he deserves a better chance. Like, he's going to make mistakes. He's a young guy. Everyone makes mistakes. Shimon Nemetz makes mistakes. Luke Hughes makes mistakes. The star players make mistakes, but they're not going to be uh, benched for their actions, where I guess Shimon Nemetz was first night. Travis Green uh, came into the mix. But anyway, digressing a little bit. I must say, I'm not the biggest fan of Travis Green being the head coach for the Devils at the time. I still think he's just a temporary fix, but I agree with them 100%, which is Holtz went out there, he made a mistake, but he redeemed himself later on and got a crucial goal for the Devils. It was a goal that jumped the Devils to a 3-1 to lead that gave him some extra cushion to work with. So I definitely wanted to give Alexander Holtz some credit in that case. All right, now on to my three stars. Third star, Dawson Mercer for getting two goals. And it's been a bit of a quote-unquote down year for Dawson Mercer. I think a lot of people had higher expectations for him, including myself. He got his 19th of the season. But the thing of, uh, that Travis Green actually talked about was that uh, with Dougie Hamilton being out, that's kind of hurt someone like Dawson Mercer because I always say that Dougie Hamilton has one of the best clappers in the entire league, and he can get that puck to the blue paint. And who's usually there to clean it up? Sometimes it's Timo Meyer. Sometimes it's someone like Dawson Mercer. The Devils don't really have someone like that on their blue line. And Dougie Hamilton was one of the best to do it, which is why I think Dawson Mercer is sort of having his down year a little bit. And I think that definitely does play a factor. But I'm glad to see Dawson Mercer net two goals in the previous matchup against the Penguins. I think um, he's definitely starting to snap out of it just a little bit more. Second star, Jake Allen. So far in a Devils uniform, he has made 105 out of 111 saves. Incredible. Jake the Snake. The thing is, is that Jake Allen, he's going to be a good backup for Devils come next year. And he's definitely exceeded my expectations up to this point because I thought I didn't think much of him when uh, the Devils got him from Montreal. But he's definitely kept the Devils in the game more times than not, especially in that Golden Knights game. He was phenomenal. And in this game against the Penguins, no different. Jake Allen, just incredible in between the pipes. And it makes you question, if the Devils just had better goaltending early on in the year, what could their season look like? And I get it's not just all on the goaltending. It also goes on defense. Sometimes it goes on offensive execution. But I can't help but think just like if Jake Allen and his supposed production was present, maybe the Devils would be in a better spot. First star. And Timo, I'm so sorry. I've been probably one of your biggest supporters and yet, I, I haven't really done an episode centering around your great success. I remember doing an episode talking about how Timo Meyer, despite his struggles, is still going to be very vital for Devils down the line because a lot of people wanted to burn Timo Meyer into the sun. They said, worst contract in Devils history. He's an overglorified bottom six player. He should have remained in San Jose. Devils lost a trade. Well, 10 goals in his last 10 games. And the thing is, is like he got two power play goals. In the game against the Penguins, he didn't really get much power play time. He was battling injury, similar to a lot of his teammates. He was out of position. He was on the third line. And I think it's safe to say that I don't think he was the biggest fan of Lindy Ruff, just based on when, when I spoke to him, because he seemed to dodge the question a little bit. But that's subjective. But Timo has really stepped up. And Nico Heischer even said at practice that Timo is starting to look like Timo again. And that's the Timo Meyer that uh, Fitzy traded for. 16 points and 11 goals in his last 13 games. Timo time, baby. Give me fuel. Give me fire. Give me, I can't say the word due to censorship, Timo Meyer. Incredible. And for all of those who doubted him, he just had to get healthy first and foremost. And he also had to just be given the right position to play. And his opportunity came knocking on the door and he answered it. I'm so proud of what Timo Meyer has done. Definitely doesn't go unnoticed. 
And ever since I posted that episode, don't want to don't want to brag or anything, but Timo has shown everyone why he is valuable. Can you say he's a bit of an overpay? Sure, but I don't think it's anything egregious or anything. I don't think it's anything to rip your hair about because if the Devils didn't offer him that type of money, I promise you, there was going to be a team that was going to offer him maybe nine or ten million dollars, according to NHL Network. And the Devils had to take advantage of the opportunity. And he actually took a bit of a pay cut because he wanted to form something special in New Jersey. Timo has been incredible. And I'm very proud of how far he has come. And now, before I compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade, let me tell you guys about Game Time. So as you guys know, I love the Game Time app. And you can get last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area. Use from all seats in the venue. Lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, etc. See views from your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. All in prices show your total up front so you know what you're getting a great deal before you check out. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Okay, before we get out of here, let's compare the stats, give the Devils a letter grade, and sign off. Shots on goal differential, 38 a pop between the Penguins and the Devils. Once again, the Devils should be thanking their lucky stars that Jake Allen came out to play. And can I just say, towards the end of the first period, he robbed Sidney Crosby, one of the best to ever do it, and Marcus Pedersen, point blank. That's the type of goaltending the Devils need moving forward. And like I was talking with Chico Resch about, he just knows how to position himself. He knows how to use that, that paddle to break up passes, break up shooting lanes. He's a very smart player, and he just knows how to flow with it. And I remember talking about on my previous episode, and Bill Spaulding brought it up on the, on the uh, previous telecast, which is he just flows. I guess you could say he floats like a butterfly in the words of Muhammad Ali. Face-off percentage, 50.8% to the Penguins, 49.2% to the Devils. Power play, Penguins were 0 for 2, Devils were 2 for 3. I do just want to add this a uh, little bit of a snippet. On that first power play goal scored by Timo Meyer. it did look like it should have belonged to Luke Hughes because it might have grazed the stick of Joseph when Joseph was battling Meyer. But at the end of the day, it was rewarded to Timo Meyer. I'm not going to complain because that adds to Timo Meyer's point total. But Luke Hughes, he got the primary assist. And that's something, uh, obviously, the Devils have been lacking, which is more power play production. Either way, Devils did score in that case. Uh, I personally think that should have been Luke Hughes' goal. But either way, still a great effort from Timo Meyer. And Luke Hughes is still looking for his first goal in 25-plus games. It's been a while since... Uh, Lukey has found the back of the net. Hits 13 to 11 in favor of the Penguins. Block shots 18 to 17 in favor of the Devils. Giveaways, Devils led the department 9 to 4. Takeaways, Penguins led the department 14 to 7. If I had to give the Devils a letter grade, I'm going to give them a solid B because they still left Jake Allen vulnerable at times and the defense needed to tighten up just a tad bit more. At the same time, very good performance from the Devils, top to bottom, and, and they extended their personal winning streak against the Penguins, once again, to seven. And if the Devils want any chance of making the playoffs, those are the type of efforts you need. You know what? No, I'm going to give them a B plus. I'm feeling generous. I feel like that's a little too harsh. B plus wasn't an A plus performance or anything like that, but still a good showing from the Devils against one of their divisional rivals. Let me know what you guys think. What have you been liking from Timo Meyer as of late? Do you think the Devils should rock their stadium series jerseys the rest of the way? And lastly, thank you for sticking by me. I apologize for the inconsistencies, but uh, like I've always said about the athletes, we're all human at the end of the day. And sometimes we all just need a refresher. We all just need a break because sometimes we deal with physical and mental emotions and we just need to take a step back for the sake of for the people that we care about. And I care about you guys immensely. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. Continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening once again.